Hey everybody, Robbie here and I'm super excited today because I'm going to get to take you on an intro flight in one of our R-44 helicopters here at Southern Utah University. We're going to get to see a lot of really cool things today and uh, let you feel exactly what it's like to fly one of our helicopters and definitely right off the bat encourage you to come and do this sometimes, uh, sometime with us. Come fly with us, check it out, see if flying a helicopter for you. Let's make it happen. Everything looks good. Cedar City traffic, helicopter Thunder 8 is on the go from the helipad, will be a southeast bound departure, Cedar. Alright, now on the go. Cedar traffic, star retriever to one nine short final, two zero, touch and go. Alright, just Cedar clearing our turn here. So getting out of Cedar City sometimes can be a little bit tricky. It's uh, one of the busiest airports in Utah, and we don't have an air traffic control tower. So I'm just listening to all of the chatter that's going on, figuring out where everybody's at, what they're doing, making sure that we are good to depart this airspace. Now what we're doing is we're going to climb up as much as we can, nice and high. For west at 6,100 westbound to west back there, left all Cedar. Climb up really high because. Waiting to zero. Climb up really high now because we want to not uh, bug our neighbors. So make sure that we get nice and high before we do that. Don't want to bother the neighbors. All right, now that we are south of Cedar City, we're going to drop down altitude a little bit here. Get down to our normal. Three to 500 feet that most helicopters like to fly at. Today we are going to be cognizant, as always, of the winds and the turbulence that the mountains are creating because that is just part of flying in the high altitude environment of Cedar City. Got uh, some light winds out of the south going on today, so we shouldn't see, uh, wouldn't expect to see anything uh, too major turbulence wise or anything like that, but uh, we will get bumped around just a little bit here and there, but shouldn't see anything too crazy. So currently uh, we are down at just under 800 feet. We have a radar altimeter in this aircraft since it is NVG uh, capable, which makes it really nice because we can see exactly when we're reaching our uh, altitude. We really like three to 500 feet in a helicopter because 500 feet is generally where we're not gonna see any airplanes below 500 feet unless they are landing or taking off. So the really nice and fun part about that is that we don't have to worry too much. We're still going to keep our eyes out for them, but we don't have to worry too much about the fixed wing traffic. And that 300 foot bottom, that really keeps us uh, away from a lot of the wires and towers, but again, we're still going to keep our eyes out for them. So it's kind of this nice sweet spot between three and 500 feet. We're coming around here, starting to see some really nice mountains. Absolutely gorgeous right now. We had some snow last week. It's kind of sticking around a little bit. Really, really pretty. All right, so we are just coming up on Canaraville Falls now, the town of Canaraville off to our uh, right side here, and uh, just starting to be able to see up those slot canyons there. Uh, to the left is the Canaraville Falls hike. Again, super beautiful hike, part of the wonderful uh, plethora of hikes that we have around here in southern Utah to do. Absolutely gorgeous, super fun. But you can see kind of the super rough terrain that there is back up in there, and today is not a day that we want to go uh, flying uh, over the top of something like that and really getting rocked around. At least not in a 44 anyway. So next what we're going to do, we're going to work our way down south a little bit more and we're going to be able to look into Kolob Canyon and Kolob Canyon is actually part of Zion National Park and we're going to make sure that we stay outside the boundaries of the National Park but we're going to climb up a little bit so that we can get a nice little look at uh, at Kolob Canyon. So if you look at that left side there now, you're going to see Kolob Canyon. Absolutely gorgeous. One of my favorite uh, places to fly is by Kolob Canyon here because you can just see those sheer cliffs and again there are some phenomenal and spectacular flights or excuse me hikes um, up and around uh, Kolob Canyon all through Zion National Park. 
just an amazing experience that this is what our students get to see every single day um, here flying in uh, at Southern Utah University. So why don't we go ahead and turn around now and we're going to start heading back towards Cedar and we're going to talk you through getting your hands on the controls of a helicopter. All right, so three basic controls on the helicopter, your pedals, your collective, and your cyclic. Your pedals are what your feet are on. That's going to control the tail rotor. So when we're in forward flight, all that that's doing is keeping us kind of pointed into the wind um, a little bit. So not too much on an intro flight that we're going to do. In fact, when I do intro flights, I'm not even going to have you put your feet on the pedals, um, and I will take care of those because your mind is going to kind of be blown with the rest of the, with the other two controls. Um, so then we're, we'll talk about the collective. The collective is where my left hand is right here. Um, this is basically your up and down. As we pull up on the collective, it, uh, it, it causes more pitch to go into the blades, and we will start climbing. So if you see here, I'll just pull this nice, gentle pull with that left hand. Then we start this nice climb up through the sky. And if we want to lower that left hand, start not climbing, or even start coming back down towards the ground, we're just going to drop that left hand. I'm just doing it nice, slow, smooth. Just drop that, and eventually we'll start coming out of the sky. Right now we do not have, uh, uh, we only about three quarter tanks of fuel and only me by myself in this aircraft, so there's a lot of power compared to, uh, compared to what we normally have. So this helicopter is gonna be a little difficult. We have a little bit of a sink going right here, but uh, yeah, a little bit hard to actually get out of the sky, which is kind of fun. Um, and uh, the last thing that, uh, the last control, and this is the one that uh, really, as uh, if, when you come to do an intro flight, that you're really going to spend your time thinking about most, mostly, is that right hand. So right here, your right hand on that cyclic. And we don't let go of the cyclic. We make sure that it's always right there. Um, in our hand so that we maintain control of the aircraft. And this is basically, um, this is going to control your turning um, and your nose up, nose down. Um, so if I wanted to make a right hand turn, I'm just going to move this cyclic in my hand to the right, um, just very, very soft, very gently. And the aircraft, I don't know if you can even see that on camera, it's so small, so gentle, the aircraft starts banking to the right. And if I just nice and gently start pushing to the left again, we'll start just a nice, gentle left bank and come back around. We can also lift the nose up and down here, so we can pull back just slightly, and you can see we'll start climbing, and that nose comes up. And then really, really gently in the Robinson helicopters, we can kind of push a little bit forward on that nose and point that nose a little bit towards the ground. That can start a descent, increase our airspeed, and uh, start getting a little closer to the ground. So that's uh, really the main control on our turning capabilities of the aircraft. And what we would do in this, uh, in this case with you flying, um, if you are here doing the intro flight, uh, this is a really nice training device that the Robinson has that we can actually just go like this. And so I can help you fly from my hands up in the air like this. And with this drop down here into your lap, um, you're going to be able to rest your forearm on your thigh and you're going to be able to start flying the helicopter. And so this is definitely one of those things where we fly with people who have never flown before all the time. Um, and so we would be right here on the controls with you the entire time. Um, there's not, uh, you don't have to worry about, you know, us just throwing the aircraft out to you or anything. Um, that would scare me too, not just you. So we want to make sure that you're comfortable, I'm comfortable, and we give you a great experience and let you really understand what it feels like to fly a helicopter so that you can make a great decision on whether this is the right career for you or not. So now I'm just gonna essentially take the controls back from you here and uh, fly us back into Cedar City and go land and uh, um, show you a little bit of uh, what hovering looks like and talk to you about how, the, how that works. And then that uh, will conclude the intro flight. Um, so, uh, so let's go look at that. All right, so we are coming back into Cedar City now. We're going to start our descent down into runway 26. And if you look at the screen, one, two, three, four, five, six other aircraft all oper operating around, including a helicopter straight in front of us here that I got eyes on. Pretty Peter traffic, helicopter busy traffic, airspace. Papa is turning into the left downwind taxiway alpha descending out of 6,600. 
All right, everybody, so now we are back in Cedar City on the ground on the helipad. So now we're gonna show you a little bit of how to hover. Um, so this would be kind of the last thing that we do before we go in on your intro flight. And basically, just like before, we would give you those controls, put that down in your lap, and let you start kind of wiggling around a little bit. Now, hovering is one of the hardest things that we do in a helicopter. And so we understand that students are not going to be very good at it. On your intro flight, it's not something that you're just going to be able to grab the controls and do. And uh, it makes it challenging. So a lot of what I'm, you're seeing right now, this is what a student is going to be doing. They're going to be kind of all over the place, making too big of corrections left, right. A lot of times with the wind out in front, they'll, they'll let the nose get up like that and it'll push us backwards a little bit. And so this is what it would kind of like feel like. now. As an instructor, I'm not going to let you get anywhere near dangerous when we're doing this. We're going to keep it nice and safe, and I'm going to help you out a lot. Again, I'm not going to let go of the controls. I'll be right here with you, but give you a good sense of how challenging it is. It's one of my favorite things about helicopters is how challenging they are. There's no flights the same, um, and even just to hold a helicopter in place is pretty difficult. So it gives you a really good uh, uh, respect when you see a helicopter just standing there, just hovering in the air, not moving. Um, how uh, how challenging that is because the pilot's using both hands, both feet, and uh, the, all three of those controls to keep the helicopter in one place. And every time they make a movement on one of those controls, they got to make counter inputs on the other two. So it makes it really challenging. Um, but uh, very, very fun, exciting thing to do to fly helicopters and very rewarding when you finally get hovering down especially. All right, everyone. Well, I just wanted to thank you for coming and flying with me today. Please, please, if this is something you're interested in, come to SUU, take an intro flight, see what it's like to actually fly a helicopter. If you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, so that you can see more. I'll see you next time.